few infrastructure projects in the United States have sparked as much debate, division, and fascination as California's attempt to build the nation's first true high-speed rail line. Envisioned as a game-changer for how Californians travel between North and South, it has been heralded as a bold solution to gridlock and climate concerns, and condemned as an over-budget, over-promised dream. More than a decade after voters first gave their approval, the project still sits at the center of political crossfire. Celebrated for its vision, criticized for its execution, and watched closely as a test of whether America can deliver transformative infrastructure in the modern era. What began with lofty promises has evolved into a saga of shifting timelines and ballooning costs. Today, let's delve into the $160 billion California High Speed Rail Mega Project, one of the most ambitious and controversial public works projects in America. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video, as it's the best way to support this channel. California's highways and airports have long been overwhelmed by the pressures of rapid population growth, booming trade, and rising environmental concerns. Travel between San Francisco and Los Angeles, two of the busiest corridors in the country, is dominated by jammed freeways, and some of the most heavily flown short-haul air routes in the world. This dependence on cars and planes has translated into mounting congestion, lost productivity, and a contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. Policymakers recognize that without a new, sustainable mode of transport, the state's economic vitality and climate goals would be at risk. In response, California turned to high-speed rail as a bold solution. This vision formally took shape in 2008 when voters approved Proposition 1A, authorizing $9.95 billion in bonds to launch what would become the California High-Speed Rail Megaproject. Conceived as the first true high-speed system in the United States, it was designed for trains capable of reaching 220 miles per hour on fully grade-separated, dedicated tracks. The project's mission is to redefine California's connections, driving economic growth, advancing sustainability, and setting a bold national precedent for modern infrastructure. At its core, the California High Speed Rail Project envisions a statewide network of about 800 miles of electrified track running from San Francisco and Sacramento in the north to Los Angeles, Anaheim, and San Diego in the south. The system is designed to connect California's largest cities with fast, reliable, and sustainable service, reshaping how people move across the state. The program is being delivered in two phases. Phase 1, about 494 miles in length, forms the backbone of the system. It will run from San Francisco and San Jose through the Central Valley to Los Angeles and Anaheim, with trains capable of reaching 220 miles per hour. Construction began in the Central Valley in 2015, and the 171-mile initial operating segment between Merced and Bakersfield is targeted to open by 2032, with full Phase 1 service to Los Angeles and Anaheim projected by the late 2030s. Phase 2 will extend the line north to Sacramento and south to San Diego, completing the statewide system at roughly 800 miles. The Phase 2 extensions are expected in the 2040s, once Phase 1 is fully operational and funding is secured. Beyond its length, the project includes a wide range of critical infrastructure and features. These include dedicated high-speed tracks and guideways, modern intermodal stations designed as urban hubs, a full 2 by 25 kilovolts electrification system powered by renewable energy, and advanced train control and signaling technologies for safety at high speeds. It also requires maintenance depots and stabling yards to keep operations running smoothly and, eventually, a new fleet of state-of-the-art train sets built to global standards. Together, these features position California's HSR 
as a transformative model for sustainable transport in the United States. Building California's high-speed rail requires a carefully sequenced effort across guideways, systems, stations, and maintenance facilities. Work begins with the guideway. Tracks are set on grade-separated alignments using viaducts, embankments, trenches, and tunnels. In the Central Valley, work is underway along 119 miles of track, where crews are building elevated viaducts, road overpasses, and underpasses to remove every level crossing. Major structures such as the Fresno River Viaduct, Cedar Viaduct, and the Tide Arch Bridge over State Route 43 are taking shape, while the Tulare Street underpass in Fresno and several road bridges have already been completed. Construction is now being extended to deliver the full 171-mile initial operating segment between Merced and Bakersfield. Future phases will move into the mountains, where long tunnels and seismic-ready bridges will be required to cross the Pacheco Pass and the Tehachapas. Next comes electrification and systems. The project will use a 2 by 25 kilovolts overhead catenary system, electric wires above the tracks that supply power for trains to reach 220 miles per hour. Power stations along the route will keep electricity steady, while advanced signaling and safety controls modeled on European high-speed rail will ensure secure operations. Track laying and catenary installation are scheduled to begin in 2026. Stations are being designed as intermodal hubs with platform-level boarding, wide concourses, and seamless links to local transit. Sites in San Francisco, San Jose, Fresno, Bakersfield, Palmdale, Los Angeles, and Anaheim are moving through planning and early works, with detailed station procurement expected once guideway sections near completion. Maintenance and operations facilities, including a heavy maintenance hub in the Central Valley, are also being planned and designed, ensuring the future fleet of electric train sets can be serviced efficiently. As of 2025, the project has created over 15,500 construction jobs and environmentally cleared 463 miles of the 494-mile Phase 1 corridor, steadily turning plans into a functioning high-speed network. When California voters approved Proposition 1A in 2008, the high-speed rail project was presented with an estimated cost of about $33 billion and a goal of opening the San Francisco-Los Angeles line by 2020. Since then, costs have escalated dramatically as the scope has been refined, construction challenges in the mountains have become clearer, and inflation has driven prices upward. Today, Phase 1 alone is expected to cost between $89 to $128 billion, while Phase 2, extending the line to Sacramento and San Diego, would add another $43 to $47 billion, bringing the total statewide price tag to well over $160 billion. Funding so far has come from three main sources, $9.95 billion in voter-approved bonds, revenue from the state's cap-and-trade program, and about $6.8 billion in federal grants. However, in 2025, the federal government withdrew around $4 billion in unspent funds, a decision the state is contesting. Even with these sources, only $25 to $30 billion is currently secured, enough to finish the Merced-Bakersfield segment by 2032 but far short of what is needed to complete Phase 1 and begin Phase 2. Closing this gap will depend on sustained federal investment and, eventually, private financing once trains are running. For now, the California High Speed Rail Authority is seeking new federal grants, challenging the loss of earlier funds, and focusing on visible progress in the Central Valley to strengthen confidence in the project's future. California's high-speed rail has faced criticism and challenges since its inception, with financing at the center of debate. Extending the line over the Pacheco Pass and Tehachapis 
requires billions more for tunnels, viaducts, stations, and rolling stock. The issue deepened in 2025 when the federal government withdrew billions in promised grants, creating uncertainty and sparking litigation. Critics argue the project is a cautionary tale of delays, rising costs, and shifting timelines. Supporters counter that seismic mountain crossings, grade separation, and full electrification were always bound to demand sustained, multi-source investment. Delivery is further complicated by strict permitting, hundreds of grade separations, and complexity of tunneling in earthquake-prone terrain. Still, the California High Speed Rail Authority points to the near-complete environmental clearance of Phase 1 and steady construction progress in Central Valley as proof of momentum. Despite its hurdles, the project's benefits are already visible. Even before trains run, more than 15,500 construction jobs have been created, with investments of $13 billion generating $22 billion in economic activity much of it in disadvantaged communities. Over the long term, the system promises faster, cleaner connections between the Bay Area, Central Valley, and Los Angeles, shifting millions of trips from highways and planes to electric rail. For regions like Fresno and Bakersfield, it represents not just new mobility but new opportunity and growth. The coming years will decide the fate of California's high-speed rail. In the Central Valley, the push is on to complete guideways, lay track, and install power and safety systems, transforming scattered structures into a working railroad. The 2025 Supplemental Project Update targets initial service between Merced and Bakersfield by 2032. While design and environmental work on the Pacheco Pass and Tehachapi crossings keep full Phase 1 expansion shovel-ready once funding arrives. That funding remains the decisive hurdle. California is challenging the loss of federal grants, pursuing new infrastructure programs, and leaning on cap-and-trade revenues. Yet, momentum is building. More states are pursuing fast rail, and America's rail manufacturing base is growing. With Brightline West also advancing between Las Vegas and Southern California, the vision of high-speed rail in the U.S. is beginning to look less like a dream and more like a movement. If California can run its first trains on time, the narrative shifts from controversy to credibility. The path to Los Angeles and San Francisco still runs through Merced and Bakersfield, and it begins with proving the vision can become reality.